Hello everyone. Welcome to our session. Today we are going to talk about remote debugging Java applications in Cloud Foundry. I am Shubhankar Chattopadhyay and I have with me Shashank Mohan Jain, my colleague in SAP. So today we are going to talk about debugging um, Java applications. So it is in context of Java, but it could be uh, also for any application. And this is true for any application that debugging code is a very essential skill which um, all the developers should have or attain and debugging a cloud based application before releasing it to production it has become a very um, uh, crucial point and it's extremely important that uh, it can be debugged and uh, by debugging we basically mean here um, capturing the variable states and, and stack traces and then essentially finding the problem. Now um, in Java, we have a very well-defined architecture for debugging and we call it as Java Debugger Platform Architecture, uh, in short uh, JDPA. So JDPA is basically a client server system which is um, built essentially from three different um, APIs. So the first one is JVM TI, which is called as Java Virtual Machine Tool Interface, which basically defines the debugging services a VM provides. And then JDWP, Java Debug Wire Protocol, which defines the communication between a debuggy and the debugger processes. And then we have JDI, a client interface, which is used by the Java debugger to access the debugging facilities. And um, this, um, this JDI basically defines a high level Java language interface, which uh, different debugging tool developers can use and write remote debugging applications, right? Um, so first let's look at um, how debugging can be done and remote debugging can be done um, with the context of uh, having breakpoints. So remote debugging with big breakpoint can be done uh, with many of the available IDs that we have like IntelliJ and Eclipse, uh, for example. And in this case, especially with Cloud Foundry applications, what we can do is we can um, enable um, SSH on an application and then we could uh, port forward that application to our local system. And once the SSH uh, is enabled and port forwarding is done um, from the local system, we could connect um, to the Java application and then we could open a, a debugging session um, remotely connecting from the local IDs. So let's let's um, see a sneak peek of this one or a small demo of this one. So what I have here is a java application as you can see um, uh, there is um, this tutorial java application that i already have deployed and um, this has a specific route so if i open this um, this basically is a simple to do application and um, uh, we can add um, or delete uh, to do uh, tasks here and um, uh, what i mentioned earlier so in order to set up the debugging we have we have to mm, ssh into the application uh, which i have already done in this tab and then in my intellij idea id we already have this mm, imported um, the source code has been imported and we also have this breakpoint set so the code as you can see is this very simple code where uh, there is a controller, mm, a to do controller, which is a REST controller, uh, which has um, some of the methods mapped against each request. And one of the requests which we are going to debug is uh, to add a particular to do, which is this one. Um, and I'm going to uh, debug this particular uh, part and see like uh, the different variables and all. So, uh, what I'll do now is to add a new um, uh, string here so let's add this hello pf comment and i'll add 
exclamatory mark. So now when I try to add this, it gets added here. So this is because the breakpoint has been muted. So I will I will unmute this. Now um, I see that there is a problem. I had added one uh, couple of exclamatory mark uh, here, but those have not been added here. So let me try it again. This time with the breakpoint on. I add this. Now it hits my breakpoint. And as you can see, the application is basically stuck here. It has not yet added to the list. And I can see that the breakpoint is now collecting data. And um, I could see that the title actually has this hello CF summit with a couple of exclamatory marks, which means the data is being passed to the controller correctly. Mm, let me just do a resume and see what happens. I can see that it has been added, but the uh, couple of uh, exclamatory marks are still omitted. So I have a possible bug here, but here um, the idea is basically to show that um, this is how you could do a debugging with breakpoint. But this has a problem that your application gets stuck whenever a particular big breakpoint is hit, which is a problem if you are running it against a development or even a pre-production -pre system. Um, and of course, in a production system also, it will be a problem, right? So now let's look at some other options. Um, so before we introduce ourselves to non-breaking breakpoints, um, let's look at the first point, which is another uh, way of um, doing a debugging, uh, which is the age-old techniques of uh, logging um, in a running system. Um, but that um, is not very effective because you have to add some code and um, which will print the log statement. So it includes uh, some code changes. And then you have to also uh, take care of additional storage, additional performance that is required for the, mm, uh, for the log statement to be printed and things like that. So uh, for this, what we can do is we can debug using non-breaking breakpoints. And this is particularly useful in target system, which is in pre-production or production in, in environment. And um, all the necessary in, insights uh, can be collected, um, like the variable states and the stack trace and all of this. Let's see how it works. We already talked about um, the Java debugging platform architecture. And um, here what happens is whenever uh, as a first step, when somebody sets a non breaking breakpoint in the local debugger UI, the debugger actually calls the relevant set of endpoints in the JDI. And then the JDI actually generates the uh, debugging state change request. And this state change request is then converted into a byte stream. And um, this this is something that can be defined in the JDWP, the uh, wire protocol. And then um, uh, via this uh, JDWP, uh, JDI then manages to send this request uh, to the backend. So the backend means the actual target system where we are trying to do a debugging. Um, and in the backend, then uh, the backend basically deciphers this uh, byte of streams. And after receiving this request, the relevant JVM TI functions are triggered to um, perform the actual setting of breakpoint in the Java application. And when the application is actually being executed, the remote VM finally hits a breakpoint and the event containing the system information and all of this are getting generated. And those are passed by the VM back to the front end. Um, um, uh, by calling the event handling functions of the JVM TI and also the breakpoint. And then the front end decodes this message that uh, it receives from the JDWP. And then um, it calls upon event functions of the JDI and then uh, it kicks off JDI events. 
and that's how um, then it gets rendered into the actual uh, debugger uh, ui and then relevant information is shown in the ui right so mm, let's look at it from a demo perspective so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to use the same um, the same application and do a debugging. Um, so for that, what I have to do is well, I have to uh, stop this debugging. So I'll I'll, I'll probably just um, uh, you know uh, disable the debugging uh, for uh, for the IntelliJ IDE, and then um, what I'll do is I'll open this. I will delete the old uh, data. And what I have here, I have this um, the Rookout uh, application. This is one of the uh, tools that you can use for um, uh, non-breaking breakpoints. Um, but there are many other uh, tools also that could be used. This is just an example. And as I said, the interface, uh, the Java debugging platform is um, leveraged. So basically all of them works in the same way. Um, and what I have done here, I have imported the source and I have uh, added the uh, couple of breakpoints that we have. So what I have added here is, the, um, of course, in the to-do controller. And you can see that the problem that we had is that um, in the application is that whenever we were adding with a couple of exclamatory mark um, in the end, it was getting omitted. And for that, I have a feeling that in the to do utils, something is happening. So I have also added a breakpoint in the to do utils. Now let's see how it works. So, what I will do, I will use the same uh, string that I had earlier used uh, with a couple of exclamatory mark in the end. And I can see it immediately gets added. So, there is no mm, break in the flow. But I can see on the uh, on the application there are a couple of um, breakpoint messages, and I, I can see the first one, which is in the to do controller, and I can see that uh, the variables are actually um, uh, the state of the variables are given here. I could see that the title um, is same as what I had um, uh, I had given. Mm, so the problem doesn't seem to be in this. So let's look at the to do utils now. Um, so in the to do utils, I can see that um, there is some change. So the uh, to do title here, um, the local variable of to do title has been changed to um, hello CF, CF summit without the exclamatory mark and I can see that this particular code here actually replaces every non alphanumeric character at the end. So this is probably the bug here. So this is probably too simple. Uh, but the idea here is that uh, we could actually leverage uh, debugging like that and you can actually see the stack trace like um, to do utils is being called from to do controller and it is being invoked from the native methods. Um, so this is how one can actually do the debugging without without blocking the flow. So yeah, so uh, this is all we wanted to actually discuss today. And um, uh, you know, you, this is how we can leverage non-breaking breakpoints um, and uh, debug um, uh, our applications which are on cloud and deployed probably in a uh, in a cloud uh, in a production or a pre-production environment. So this is all from us. Um, please ask if you have any questions. Thank you.